Good morning, everyone. Christian Duke, MD Noble Weekly, episode 12, brought to you courtesy of IronMagLabs.com, your go-to source for all your bodybuilding and fitness supplements. Today is Wednesday, September the 6th, and we have got a great show for you. We're going to start out with our good friend Sugar Sean Ray, who has decided to leave Team MD, gave his resignation in, but has done it in a class act. Thanks, Steve. Thank Team MD and thank the fans. And we are going to miss Sean. He is a world-class promoter, a world-class commentator, a world-class writer, a world-class show host, a world-class ambassador for the sport of bodybuilding. So we certainly want to wish him all the best of luck with all of his future endeavors. Next, I want to talk about Francis Lionel Bayiki. Now, let me tell you something about Lionel. I have been a huge fan of his for years. And this is a bodybuilder that has a complete physique. This is a bodybuilder that really puts the time in the gym and with his diet and promoting the sport and being good to the fans. I mean, he is a really good guy. The problem with Lionel is that final 48 hours. He needs to dial it in. Whatever happens that final 48, I don't know if it's prep coaches. I don't know if it's cortisol. I don't know if it's stress. I mean, I don't know what it is. But if he can come in dialed in, he could be... Jeez, I mean, he could be top. He could he could win the show. I mean, let's be real. I mean, he has a complete physique. He knows how to pose. The dialing it in is the problem for him. And he has been dialed in before. I mean, there are shows that he should have won handily. But, uh, you know, at the Olympia, we have yet to see him 100% dialed in. So, like I said, and the video, my gosh, the video that he put out, you know, I had to commend him on Instagram publicly you know, and uh, we spoke back and forth a little bit. He's always super nice. In the video, he looks phenomenal. And where a lot of bodybuilders like Big Rami are just showing parts of his body, not even his face, you know, Lionel is training in the gym in front of the cameras and is posing. I mean, this is a guy that's done his homework and is very confident with his physique. But like I said, the final 48 will be critical. Now, another great bodybuilder that's released the video catching not only my attention, but Louis Marcos and many, many others, is Brandon Curry, who this year won in New Zealand and won in Australia and has been training at Bader Budai's Oxygen Gym in Kuwait. This guy looks phenomenal. And I've been saying it since mid-July. I haven't done my predictions the day before or when the guys are getting on stage. I've been saying this since mid-July that Brandon will be top five. He's got that five spot. And honestly, if he's got that five spot... What's to say he won't have a better spot? You know, this is a guy that, that really is bringing it and has totally, totally reinvented his physique. Now, next, I would like to talk about the official Olympia list. Now, that has a lot of people talking because Kai Green is not on it. Furthermore, there seems to be a lot of speculation. Why is the press conference being moved from the Orleans showroom to the Orleans arena? The showroom only holds a few hundred, the arena holds several thousand, and a lot of people seem to believe that this move is because Kai Green is going to storm the press conference and jump in at the last minute. Well, I did my homework and I contacted the appropriate folks, and that's actually not the case. The move has been four years coming, and this year's press conference is going to be much, much bigger simply because after four years of wanting to make the move, they finally did. And... Um, I got to tell you, I don't think that Weider AMI are really focused on Kai. I mean, they're getting a lot of, you know, press with uh, Ruli, a lot of press with uh, Big Rami, of course, a lot of press because of the champ, Phil Heath, the number one challenger, Sean Fluxitron Roden, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I don't think they really need uh, Kai Green to uh, crash the press conference in order to have a mega, mega successful event, just like they have every year. Now... The next thing I want to talk about is a little bizarre because, you know, a lot of you may not be familiar with Nick's strength and power. Now, he is the YouTuber that Dave Palumbo cited in that, you know, botched, you know, Kai Green leaves the IFBB forever story. Now, Nick's strength and power has some sort of an association with Redcon. In fact, he has a discount code and, you know, there's something going, you know, I guess maybe it's a sponsorship. I don't, I don't know. I, I have, I'm not privy to the dealings between them two, but... Uh, Nick is having an event called the Mr. Golden Era. Now, it is a bodybuilding show, sort of. It's all classic physique, and it's going to be all done online. And apparently, there is something to do with Redcon where I guess if you win, you get protein isolate or something for the whole year, and you got to pay $20 to do it. 
And it's all really kind of hokey to me because I, I'm almost positive it doesn't have an NPC sanction, and yet it's a bodybuilding show, so I'm not sure who's going to be doing that. Um, but maybe it's just like a website talent show or something. I mean, I, I'm not. It, it sounds very interesting, and uh, it, it certainly sounds like something that will be successful. Nick Strength and Power has 150,000 subscribers or something to that effect. But I mean, honestly, I don't see why somebody would want to do a, I guess, a, a website pageant when they can just, you know, register and compete at an NPC show, which, where, you know, if they win, they can go on to a national level competition and ultimately potentially earn a pro card. I mean, I, I don't understand the, um, I guess, I, I don't understand why somebody would want to compete on a, on a website's uh, bodybuilding show. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. But in any event, it's, it's something new, so I guess it's got a lot of people, uh, you know, talking. Also, I want to give a big, big salute, uh, not a Louis Marco salute, a Christian Duke salute to Dave Lieberman. Now, there are two people, two people in the MPC IFBB that I look up to as mentors, and I make no secret of it. And one is the MPC Mid-Atlantic Zone Chairman, Gary Udit, and the other one is Dave Lieberman, who is the promoter of the MPC Natural Ohio and the promoter of the upcoming MPC Natural Northern USA both are in Cleveland at the Cleveland Public Auditorium. Now, for this year's Natural Northern USA, Dallas McCarver was supposed to guest pose. May you rest in peace. Uh, you know, and, and I was, I was, you know, everybody's been so, you know, just depressed and mourning the loss. And, and, and I honestly didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen to the show. And, and, you know, because, you know, it's such short notice. Well, Dave Lieberman being the ever resourceful contest promoter that he is, was able to secure five-time Arnold Classic champion and your 2008 Mr. Olympia Dexter the Blade Jackson to guest pose. So I'm like, wow. And, and there will be special appearances by Dana Lynn Bailey and Rob Bailey as well. And they haven't been there for at least a couple of years, two or three years, because I remember the last time I saw them there, they were doing a seminar with the 212 Mr. Olympia Flex, the Welsh Dragon, Lewis. So uh, again, you know, Dave is just um, something else. I mean, he is one of the greatest promoters of all time. And you know, I'm just, I was just like, wow, you know what I mean? So if you want more information on that, log on to DaveLieberman.com. You do not want to miss that show. They have hundreds of competitors, three, 400 competitors strong easily, a massive expo at the Cleveland Public Auditorium right there in downtown Cleveland, right next to the Westin. So, you know, you go to the hotel, you know what I mean? You come downstairs, go to the show, go to the uh, after show dinner, which is like two, three blocks down the street. I mean, it's all like in a very, very close proximity and it's a blast. It's a great, great weekend. So definitely check that out. Go to DaveLieberman.com. Uh, next, I want to talk about, <laughs> oh my God, I want to talk about Louis Marco. Yeah, he made a comment about uh, Big Rami and it's not, just Louis Marco, of course, the story is about Big Rami, who, you know, I don't know, like after Chad Nichols called bullshit on the uh, progress photos that were being leaked out and after Badr Budai told Dave Palumbo that, in fact, we don't get the good photos. I'm starting to wonder if, you know, anything that we see from Rami's camp is legit. Uh, there's photos of, you know, his back and his quads and but they're like literally pictures of his muscle. He's not in them. And I mean, so I mean, who knows when those photos are from? But in any event, assuming that they're from now, yeah, he looks pretty ripped. But again, guys, come on, 305, 310, this guy. I mean, he's never really been 100% dialed in. And now, according to Louis Marco, and this is a direct quote, Big Rami will be 45 pounds heavier on stage this year than last year. I mean, guys, come on. I, I have to, again, concede. I have to agree with four-time Mr. Olympia, Jay Cutler, you know, if this guy comes in at 300 pounds or over, there is no way he's coming in dialed in, at least not to the extent needed to win the Mr. Olympia. But, you know, I guess I guess we'll have to wait and see. OK, now this weekend is the Wings of Strength, September 9th, uh, Rising Phoenix World Championships, Arizona Women's Pro. And I have got to tell you guys, this is a who's who. Uh, this is, for all intents and purposes, the greatest show in women's bodybuilding in actuality. Uh, you know, Yaksani Rikin, who your 2005 Miss Olympia and multi-year Miss International is said to be competing for the last time. I interviewed her uh, in June and she, you know, Yaksani has, has said that she's going to retire before, 
But uh, I really think this might be it, guys. And like I said, you know, she is a Miss Olympia. So in terms of, you know, stature and in terms of accomplishments, she is, you know, the superstar in this lineup. However, however, I mean, I'm looking here at my notes. You know, you got Sheila Black. She won Tampa. You got Rita Bello. Now, Rita is, I got to tell you, Rita, I'm going to go over some of the competitors here because I got to be honest with you. This is a, a stacked show. Now, Rita comes in hard as nails. And she is so impressive from Argentina. I mean, talk, I mean, probably the best conditioning that I've seen on a women's bodybuilder or, you know, or, or any bodybuilder really for that matter in a long time. Some serious throwback to the 90s conditioning there. Uh, then, of course, uh, you know, Lisa Cross. Now, Lisa Cross is interesting because, you know, Lisa's had a couple runner ups in Tampa. You know, and uh, she is just, I mean, absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal structure on her. Great physique, you know, real good team player. I mean, and I like team players, honestly. I, I, I like the good positive attitude and the, the good positive, you know, uh, good sportsmanship. I, I like that. I think that's important. Um, of course, you got uh, Sylvia Mata, who won in Puerto Rico. You got uh, Maria McCullough, who won in Omaha. You got Kim Buck, who's also won. I mean, uh, I believe she won in um, she won in Toronto. So I mean, you've got a lot of you've got a lot of champions from 2017 that will be competing. And then, of course, you, you know, uh, you, you got uh, Yaksani, and you got some other really big names. So, in all honesty, I mean, uh, there is one competitor, I, I probably will not say her name correct, but I, I like her physique, I like her structure, her name is Elena Oana, she's from uh, Romania, I really like her physique, and of course, uh, there's uh, Hella Trevino, and, and I mean, there's, there's just a lot of people, I mean, honestly, just looking over my notes, there's, there's honestly a lot of talent here, um, Victoria Dominguez, very good back there, um, you know, we got, of course, Pauline Nelson, who won the uh, Masters Nationals this year. Also a very, very good physique. You know, and again, uh, just because this is, you know, her pro debut doesn't mean anything. I mean, look at Derek Lunsford. I mean, that was his pro debut in Tampa, and he won the 212. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, there's no there's no reason that Pauline couldn't do the same thing. You know, so again, it's, it, it, it's going to be very, very stacked. You know, there's some really good prize money. There's a decked out Jeep. So, I mean, you know, there, there's a lot on the line. You know, women's bodybuilding, I mean, no one can say that it's not making a resurgence, which I'm really, really happy about. And um, I think that that is absolutely phenomenal. There is something else that I wanted to say. Um, hmm. Well, no, I, I really, I really want to say it. And I, I know that I'm going to regret it if I don't. Ah, that's what I was going to say. Maria McCullough. See, I didn't know that. See, I don't know all things, uh, believe it or not. But Maria McCullough is actually, in addition to being a champion, in addition to being someone to really watch to win the world championships, she, get this, she started out in women's physique and moved up, moved up to women's bodybuilding. That's huge because the normal uh, evolution, unfortunately, that we have seen in years past is women's bodybuilders moving down to women's physique because it, it got to a point where folks thought women's bodybuilding was going to disappear. They got rid of the Miss International. They stopped doing the Miss Olympia. The shows were drying up. So people thought, you know, wow, is this the end of women's bodybuilding? And a lot of women's bodybuilders went down to women's physique. The fact that Maria McCola went up to women's bodybuilding is again a real sign that women's bodybuilding is coming back and and you know she's gone up to women's bodybuilding and she's you know she won a show you know and now she's gonna be the world championships and we're talking about her on md noble weekly as someone that could potentially win the whole show so you know i think she's doing pretty well now industry news ct fletcher came out with a video thanking his fans big kudos to kevin gretch of evolution of bodybuilding because he broke that story and it's great to see that ct is back you know he is just he's a tank and as you guys know he had a heart attack in june a lot of people were very concerned, and uh, rightfully so. I mean, it was a, it was a pretty serious situation, and he has some some uh, procedures that he is awaiting, uh, I guess, for the future. And we all certainly wish him the absolute best because CT Fletcher really brings uh, an undeniable spirit to the fitness industry that would be sorely missed without him. Also, big kudos to my good friend Dave Berlay from Digital Muscle. Did a great interview with Hidetada Yamagishi. 
And the interview, I really would really recommend that you guys go check that out. You know, Hidetata says that he's, you know, kind of out of it a little bit in the sense of out of the sport. And he wants to take a step back and reevaluate kind of like, you know, um, really get kind of charged up again about it. He has some rotator cuff issues also he's got to deal with. It's a very, very candid interview. He will not be doing this year's Mr. Olympia, which is a big shock. But, uh, you know, Hidetada is just, to me, you know, one of the best of the 212. Again, met him many, many times, spoken to him many, many times, both in person and online. And honestly, just a great, great ambassador for the sport of bodybuilding. And I have no doubt at all that he will be back with a vengeance. But uh, a great interview with Dave Brulé. I, I like I like those interviews. I like where it's not like, so uh, how many times do you take protein a day? And how many times do you stretch? It, 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 it's a real interview, a real conversation between friends. And those are always the best interviews. Uh, next, I want to talk about three-time Miss Bikini Olympia, Ashley Kaltwalser. She has inked a deal with the awesome high-tech pharmaceuticals. Ashley is just, honestly, I think the only woman that has won the figure, excuse me, the Bikini Olympia uh, three times in a row. Yeah, three times in a row. And I believe, uh, let me see, I want to make sure, I want to make sure. Yeah, that see, that's that's what's crazy. 2014 got a perfect score. Yeah, that's 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 wicked. That's awesome. So she's with high tech. She will not be competing at this year's Mr. Uh, well, yes, yeah, Mr. Olympia. Weird. Uh, but she will not be competing in this year's Miss Olympia bikini. God, there's just so many, there's so many divisions and so many classes. It's awesome. So she will not be competing in this year's Miss Bikini Olympia, but she will be at the high tech booth with all the other great athletes. So definitely go by, get an autograph. She has been at Dave Lieberman's Natural Ohio and Natural Northern USA several times. And she's always like just one of the nicest, most down to earth people. And again, three time Miss Bikini Olympia got a perfect score. Signed with High Tech Pharmaceuticals. I mean, she's got to be on top of the world right now. And we certainly are very, very happy for her. So, guys, I think that's pretty much it. We had a lot for today's show, as you can see, a lot. But uh, MD Noble Weekly warrants it. It is the best weekly show in bodybuilding, isn't it? Come on, isn't it? All right. Well, anyways, thank you so much. Till next week, Christian Duke, MD Noble Weekly, brought to you courtesy of IronMagLabs.com.